Are you wondering about Singapore math second grade? Stick around, that's what I'm gonna show you today. Hi, I'm Rebecca with the Parent Teacher Bridge where you can find the ideas and solutions you need to empower you to be your child's most influential teacher. Today, I'm going to talk about Singapore math, US edition, that means it's not the common core, second grade. Now I did a video a while back that was just on the first grade and really that was a matter of me taking whatever it was my children had recently finished and talking through it. So we have used Singapore math for all three of our children and my youngest is just now going into fourth grade. So I can say that I've used it with three different kids. What you need to know is there's at least four student books that you will need. I never got the teacher manual but if teaching is really, really foreign to you and you're gonna feel a little bit more equipped getting the teacher manual, that's fine. I was only able to find three of my old books, but here's how they break down. You will get two textbooks, a 2A and a 2B. So 2B just simply means it's for the spring semester of the school year, okay? And they are very thin. They are colorful when you open them up. And each lesson that you walk through, I was able to do this without a teacher manual, okay? It was fine. So let's say you're on chapter five in this 2B book, which is on time, okay? You could talk through these pictures and this story with your child and go through these examples. I would recommend getting like a little play clock, like a little Judy clock and talk through it and ask them what the answers are. I would not write in it, that way you could save it or resell it later. But if you do write in it, it's not the end of the world. These are only about 14 to $16 for each little booklet. And then at the bottom of that particular lesson, it's going to tell you the workbook exercises that it corresponds with. So it corresponds with lesson, with the exercises 46 and 47. So if I go to the 2B workbook, and I open up to exercise 46 and 47, you're going to find time problems. So instead of you know printing off worksheets, the worksheets are just right there for you and you can work through it. So I like how that works. I like how the textbook is in color, it grabs their attention, the lessons are never very long, and in addition to the little lessons, they do have some practice pages. You could use that as a test if you wanted. You could use practice 1B, for example, as a sort of study guide and work through it with your child to see where their problems are, and then maybe administer this as a test. Now, that would be a really long test for second grade. So you could pick and choose some of these because if you notice up here, all of these one through five have three different problems in them, okay? And just think about what is the point of a test really. The point of a test is for you to see, does my child really know it or not? The point of a test is not to stress them out. In a traditional school, when the parent is not there, the teachers will give tests just so they can report back to the parent. However, since you are the parent, you may not choose to test so much when they are at such a young age. Your test or your assessment of your child might come through observation because if you're working with them, you're going to see what they do get and what they don't get. So again, you can order these as sets. Sometimes I get the textbook if it's not been written in. I'll get it off eBay or some used uh, store online, used bookstore. Um, and then the workbooks look like this. There's a 2A and a 2B, again, for the fall and the spring. So let's see what are some of the things that they learn in the first half of the second grade, okay? So they are going to learn uh, some place value. This is called expanded form. When they take 175 and they expand it out to uh, reiterate place value using words to describe the numbers. They will have some puzzle pages throughout that are kind of fun that they do just to give a little change up. Um, and when they have some problems that they are working for the day, then again, they have something that they can color at the bottom. That just adds a little element of fun. And you can see where we put check marks where they answered these. They're gonna do your normal adding and subtracting in second grade. There's the two digit numbers. Uh, there's some subtraction with some three digit numbers. Word problems. You get plenty of word problems. 
which really are realistic work problems. You need to know work problems in real life. Um, they will give some things that are measurement. They're still reiterating place value here in the first part of uh, third grade, second grade, I mean. I said third grade by accident because I was flipping through. And what do you know in second grade, first semester of second grade, they do give some exposure with multiplying and dividing. Yes, so actually they start around exercise 31. They give them some exposure to what it means to have equal groups and what it means to divide something into equal groups. Now my children didn't have everything memorized with, add, uh, with multiplying and dividing at that stage, but it did give them a little bit of exposure. And then it moves back to your adding and subtracting, which is a huge part of second grade. Comes back to where it gives some fact practice. Now whenever I use these books, I took time if I needed to, if I needed to pause on the book for a while and then do some kind of multiplication learning or addition learning or something like that where all we do are just facts. Whether we do skip counting, whether we do uh, learning some fun math games on an iPad, something like that. It was always okay for me to just pause and then come back to the book later. So it kind of ends with some multiplying and dividing word problems for the first semester. The second semester, I'll just show you the textbook on this one instead of the workbook because it does have a table of contents. So on this table of contents, we're still doing adding and subtracting, multiplying and dividing, money, fractions, fractions introduced in second grade, I love it, time, capacity, graphs, geometry, and some area. And that's what they wrap it up with. Real quick, if you want to see the workbook uh, for the second half of second grade, again, they don't let them forget how to add and subtract. They're still doing that, still exposing them to multiplying and dividing, and just putting different little pictures in there. Kind of fun, see the sailboats. I love that it was open, grab and go. Again, I did not order the teacher manual, but if you feel like you need it, you could do that. Um, and then some real world money problems. And they teach them some uh, methods of mental math that you might see sometimes in some of the Common Core stuff, but I don't think it's anything ridiculous. Um, and this has worked so well for my kids. I used Singapore Early Bird Kindergarten when they were all in kindergarten. I actually did not need the A book though because it was way too easy for my kids. So I started with the B book for the Early Bird Kindergarten for the Singapore. And then I went on to the 1A and 1B in first grade, the 2A, 2B in second, and third grade the same, fourth grade the same, fifth grade the same. And then after fifth grade, I was able to switch to another curriculum. Now Singapore US Edition does do a sixth grade uh, version with books just like this, but we, we chose not to do that. Someone close to me had used those and said that the sixth grade was really similar to the fifth grade. So the kids did pretty well in math, so we moved on to something else at that point in time. Now, before I end this video, I did want to show you a few of the math manipulatives that I have used for all three of my kids during the elementary years. Some curriculum companies will send a package of um, manipulatives, and if you are able to afford those, that's great. Okay, so this one, they're not all put together but they're just the Unifix cubes. So if you look at the red, you can see there are 10 of them. So they come in about a pack of 100. So you have 10 tens and you can connect these blocks and teach so many wonderful things with those. I got those off rainbowresource.com for about $11 or so. Um, and then this is the small clock I was telling you about. It's just a small Judy clock and you have a little handle and you can teach analog time with that. Another thing is to just have card stock or index cards and you can make flashcards for your child. Remember I said that you can pause on any curriculum, you know, so I would do it with Singapore math um, when I felt like my kids needed the facts more, uh, more practice on them, and I would just work with some flashcards. Now I do have a video about flashcards. You can go back to my channel and find that um, where I talk about some helpful information there. 
And the other piece of manipulative or tool that I used was a multiplication table. Some people call it a multi multiplication chart. You can find these in black and white or in color. This one went all the way to the 15. But you can get one that goes all the way to the 12s if the 15s is a little bit too much. And teach your child how to use it. They can use this to find multiplication problems and division problems. They can use it if they move along and they are skip counting or if they move along and they are skip counting. So these were wonderful tools and very affordable tools that I used when I was doing Singapore math with my children. And because I used it for all three kids, they were all very, very ready for middle school math and upper level math because my oldest is now starting 10th grade. So I feel very comfortable in how it laid a foundation for my children. Just remember, there's no such thing as a perfect curriculum. So knowing that you can grab tools uh, to use to help your child get a better understanding of some of these ideas and knowing that you can pause on any curriculum anytime you want. The last thing that I will tell you that I did is I would go to one of these discount stores and if they had like a second grade level book that had a lot of fun things that were math related, I would get those from time to time and let my kid work through those. Uh, if there was a particular busy day or if we were going um, out in the car somewhere and I didn't want them to take their actual textbook, but I still wanted them to stay fresh on math, we would use those, make use of those as well. If they have something that doesn't make sense or something that's confusing, you don't have to do it. You're the teacher and you get to decide. So hopefully that helps. Can you drop a comment below? I've got some old math books sitting here that are from third grade and fourth grade that I plan to do more videos. So make sure you click like and subscribe. Remember, you are your child's most influential teacher.